Hello, welcome back to Flash Tutorials with Alan Becker. Today we're talking about masks. So, masks are extremely useful. You can use them for many different things, and I will show you many examples. Uh, but what a mask basically is, is a layer that acts kind of as a window through which you block out um, elements of the underlying layer. So, if I have this circle uh, on top of this rectangle, depending on where I put this circle and then right click and select mask it will mask out that rectangle and also hide the circle but you can still see the shape of the circle through the mask anyway um, yeah so a mask is not a permanent effect it is always possible to unlock these layers and then move them around again and then relock them so if they're unlocked um, It'll, it'll look like this, but once you render out the image or animation, it will look like this. So keep that in mind. So let's see, um, you can also take off the mask, and then what if I reverse the layers, then now this rectangle becomes the mask through which I view the circle. So I just right click and then hit mask, and then it becomes a mask. So this top layer is the mask and this bottom layer is the masked so keep that in mind and the ha it has to be locked in order for you to see the mask so that's a simple overview of masks and uh, you can also have multiple layers down here to create complex masking effects so I'll give you four examples of masks that I use masks for and then I will go into each one and recreate them step by step. So first I have, let's see, um, mask barn. So I've created a stick figure coming out from behind this barn. And this this image is obviously not a multi-layer image, so there's no way I could have, I mean there's a way, but I did not separate this barn onto its own layer and then put the stick figure behind it. I used a mask instead to put to make it look like the stick figure is coming out from behind it. So if I unlock all these layers, you can see that my mask is actually just a rectangle and uh this rectangle is the only part of this layer, the stick figure layer that you will be able to see. And um I made it slightly transparent so that I can see what's underneath it. So if I lock it again, it's like that. But if I unlock it, then it's like that. So yeah, that's that one. Um, next we have mask underscore news. Okay, so in this one I have a television and it's got a bunch of stuff in it, but none of it is bleeding outside of this rectangular line or this, uh, yeah, the TV shape. So I have my mask, which is this green rectangle, and then I have the breaking news, which goes from, from uh, right to left, and then I have my uh, thingy that goes like that outside the edges, and then the background, which is a little bit bigger than the mask, just to be safe. So yep, uh, that is the TV. Next I have, I use masks to create a simple head turn while keeping the elements of the face inside the face. So I have my mask layer which is uh, a green circle, the same exact um, size as the head shape. And then I have this face which is its own symbol called face and I just move it. And then when I mask it it gets cropped, right? Like that. Okay. My last one, which is my favorite one, is uh, using masks to create textures. So I have this fire texture that I have applied underneath this animation. So you can have the mask layer actually be animated, and that creates really cool effects. Um, if I unlock this again and I hide the bottom layer, you see just this is just an animation on top and then underneath is just a picture going up 
and I got this picture from uh, cgtextures.com uh, it's uh, completely free and royalty free uh, and uh, yeah you're allowed to use those textures um, so let's go through each one one by one and let's start with the barn so I have this picture that I took during a road trip and I'm going to use a free transform tool hold down shift to, to keep its proportions zoom back in and then I create a new layer on top of that and then make a stick figure walking behind it uh, I don't know if I really need to actually go through the entire <laughs> animation process here because that's not really what I'm here to do um, but I'll make it really simple. So hit F7, turn on onion skin, and make him walk. This is awful. Anyway, so he's moving his leg. And F7 again. Okay, that'll have to do. And I'll just space these out like that. Yeah, that's good enough. So I just need to create this box. And you can do, yeah, you can use anything as long as it's the right shape. So I have this black rectangle, and in order to see what's underneath it, I go to color and then turn down this alpha 60%. Now I hit Q for the free transform tool, and since it's kind of bleeding into the edge, I just skew it a little bit, and and then we right click this mask layer and hit mask. So now it is behind it. So as you can see it looks like it's kind of a bit too much or too far to the left so I just unlock this layer and then scoot it a little bit and then relock it so now it looks a little better unfortunately it's not possible I don't think to blur masks so that it looks like it's a little bit blurry as the edge of this barn is so that's unfortunate but uh can do that in programs like After Effects and stuff. Anyway, that's the first the first example. Let's do the next example. I'm gonna hit F7 over here. Now we have some more. Uh, no, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna delete these layers and delete and Shift F6. Okay, next we have our news. So I'm going to um, make a simple TV. Uh, I'm gonna use the line, make the line black, and make the fill non-existent, and turn off object drawing. Uh, so yeah, I have this. Oh gosh, I'm gonna double click, set it to one, and I'm going to copy, Control C, and then Control Shift V and then hold down shift and alt while I scale it in and then do that okay and now I just take the line tool and make sure that I have my snap to objects and then just make a simple stand for it um, yeah scoot that in and then I take my line tool, press N, oops, and then snap it down there. And then I just fill everything in with a nice black. And I will just make a background layer that is gray for the sake of it being a room that is gray. Turn off the line and make a rectangle. Okay, so now I have this TV shape. Uh, I don't need these lines anymore, so I'll just delete 
Oops. And then I will fill in the middle of it with green. Take the green, control X for cut, and then control shift V right there. So yeah, if you don't hit control shift V but just control V, it'll get off. Not it won't paste in place. So control shift V. And now I could just uh, make a new layer above this TV layer and just add whatever I want. So gonna breaking news. And in order to move it across the screen, I need to turn it into a symbol. So I hit F. I hit F8. Text two since I already made it. And I move it across by hitting F6 here. And then I just hold shift and the left arrow button to drag it across right click create sh um, create classic tween breaking news and I'll just make a simple uh, thing with a th you know you know thing and uh, actually I have to make sure that object drawing is no I don't not really it's okay I'll um, turn this up to three or so just make that and then fill it in fill it in double click F8 uh, what do I call this TV thing and then I just I'm going to hit F6 here F6 here and then make this one smaller I hit Q hold down shift move it in and then I just drag one of these keyframes here, drag one of these keyframes here, drag one of these keyframes here. And then I just select all this, create classic tween. Sorry if I'm going really fast. Um, but this part's not important so much. So I also want to give it a nice ease. So I hit this edit easing, go down here, go up here, OK. So now it's a lot smoother, not, yeah. So. Uh, so if I go up to the top, to this layer, right click, hit mask, now this stuff, oh yeah, so the text is, the text is inside, but this part is not, that is because it only masks this layer here. So if I want to add something to this mask, all I do is click this layer and drag it underneath. And now I also have to lock it too now it's inside it looks like we're watching TV but you can see the wall behind it so that's no good so I'm gonna create another layer make it a little bit of a nice white uh, nice thing light gray delete that out outer border thing and then drag it in lock it so there we go we made our TV uh, okay um, now I'm just going to delete all that all of our hard work and now we're going to work on the turn the stick figure turn and let's see I'm just going to turn off the stroke set it to gray and hold down shift and that is his head let's make it a dark gray and now we make a face I hit my brush tool make it black zoom in hold down the space bar and then new layer on top and make sure object drawing is turned on I can also hit J and I'm gonna make a face and zoom in that's my face okay I hit the I select the whole layer by hitting by clicking it and then F8 and then make a face. I already made it, so I call it face two. And I'm just going to uh, no. I'm going to move it to the center first. Uh, I kind of think that it looks a little bit off center. Okay, so now I move it to. Okay, I just uh, go to this frame, hit F6, and then hit F6 here, and then I just hit Shift Right Arrow Key and move it here and 
I'm just going to create a class between here so that it moves and give it a nice gradual ease. Start out slow, get faster, end slow. So there we go. Now we just need the mask and in order to get the exact same shape as this I'm just going to copy this exact shape. Control C, go to the top, make a new layer and then Control shift v now we have that exact same shape but in order to distinguish it from the bottom shape I'm going to turn it green or make it red today and then I will right click and mask so we have the face that is moving and I am not going to bother doing the no I'm going to give him some arms I'm going to give him some arms and legs um, so take that color I'll make it 20, 20 wide and make sure object drawing is turned on. And for the first frame, I'm just going to make it look like that. And, and then make the second pose, which is, okay, like that. And really easy to in between I just F6 this and um, take this arm skew it take this arm skew it and then double click this edit it a little bit and double click this edit it a little bit Ooh. Ooh. anyway um, and then drag this frame in between and double click edit a little bit double click edit a little bit and skew and skew so simple turn I'm gonna move this a little bit so his head turn is just about as fast as his body turn so we created that and last but not least we will make our fire. So I have this fire image, um, and I guess if you would like to learn how to animate fire, you can just go to my fire tutorial video. Uh, so I'm just going to click and drag this fire animation uh, here, but just for the purpose of doing it in, from scratch, I'm going to make another one. Man, I'm just going all out in this tutorial. So I'm just going to make a simple thing. Oh, that's so ugly. It's okay. Uh, actually, I'm going to use the line tool. Uh, yeah, the line tool, pencil tool, pencil tool. And turn it down to one turn off object drawing and make a simple shape um okay so i'm just going to do this really fast and not talk and then fast forward it Okay, so I have these uh, these lines made, and all I do is just fill in. It really doesn't matter what color you fill it in, as long as it's filled in. So I'm just gonna hit the click it, hit the period key to move to the next frame, and just fill in everything. Okay, so I have that. So I'm going to select all these frames, copy frames, insert new symbol, call it fire, fire, and then right click, paste frames. So now I have my 
fire fire and I can just delete these um, clear frames and then drag my fire fire um, I'm also going to go in all of these um, drag this onion skin all the way out hit edit multiple frames control A to select all and then uh, set the stroke color to none to, to delete all the lines that I created so now I have this fire Whew, okay so now I'm just going to drag this out so you can see that it loops more or less <laughs> and now I go underneath um, go drag this layer to the bottom and then I take my flame image which you can find by using the internet and zoom out control minus and hit Q and hold down shift so we want it to be big enough that it can be scaled like to move up and down and I'm on as you saw before I rotated it because it's more of up and down here so yeah um, in order to move it since it's a bitmap file you cannot give it a classic tween so you have to turn it into a symbol f8 um, image fire 2 and so well let's just see what it looks like right now so I take my top layer which is the animation right click hit mask and there it is so it looks it looks cool but we want the fire to look like it's moving so I'm gonna unlock and then make this start here and then F6 at the at the yeah at here and then move like that move it down so it looks like it's moving up right I think that's gonna work so classic tween lock the layers oops yeah I was, I was totally wrong okay <laughs> um, so we start kind of up top and then move de move yeah move up there we go okay that's what I meant um, yeah and you can do this kind of effect for water like uh, you know water effects and you can also add textures to people's clothes like if you have a, a like a fabric texture I think that would look really cool you can use it for grass uh, you know sky uh, metal elements for like a robot kind of thing and move it around as much as you want so yeah this is really cool if I want it to look like it's looping then I would probably duplicate this duplicate these frames uh, copy frames make a new layer paste frames uh, delete these and kind of oh, what am I doing here drag them out like this not really sure what I'm doing um, and then F6 and kind of uh, let's see we have this and we give it a alpha effect of zero so that it fades fades so I really don't know what that's gonna look like let's see what it looks like I'm gonna delete these layers shift F5 whoop mm. Yeah, and then you would also want to um, cut the animation here so that the beginning, like it goes to this point and then loops back to this point. So you would delete these frames. So I would shift F5 that. And now if we hit control loop playback, it looks like it's kind of looping. Okay, sweet. So there is our fire animation using a mask. So I hope you learned something. Um, I feel like I definitely um, exhausted my knowledge of masks um, in this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, leave a comment or contact me uh, through my website, alanbecker.net. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.